Hey girlies, welcome back to another video. It's your girl Christina Fashion. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about how to start a jewelry business with little to no money. And if you didn't think it's possible, it is possible. So this strategy I wanna talk about is called drop shipping. So drop shipping is basically where your supplier basically ships and packages your orders and ships out to your customer without you having to pay for any inventory upfront. You only pay for inventory once your customer makes a purchase and possibly paying a fulfillment fee from your supplier. Job shipping can be very, very beneficial for someone who wants to kind of earn money passively. You don't want to own any type of inventory or store at your house or even do like laborious work like shipping and fulfilling the orders on your own because sometimes honestly shipping orders can be very very time consuming um like there was one time where i had sold out in my store and i was sitting there for a whole day shipping out um fulfilling and shipping out orders if you definitely don't want to do that type of work then drop shipping may be for you so we'll be breaking down the pros and cons to drop shipping because honestly with any like business method not every business method is for everyone so this basically gives you an idea how you can start a business without having to make any excuses that you can't start a business because you don't have the money so this method can help you if you really really don't have the finances you don't have the savings to start a business um, then job shipping may be for you. So let's break down the first pro. So the first pro when it comes to drop shipping a business, you don't have to store any inventory. Like how nice would it be to walk into your office and not have to deal with inventory, especially if you're working out your small dorm or your small room, maybe you still at your parents' house or maybe you have kids around and you're in a small tight space. So you don't have to deal with having to create extra store shelves and having to store inventory. The, um, the more your business grows and you want to scale it, then you may need like an extra space, like a warehouse or like a storage unit where you have to store your inventory. So that's really one of the pros to drop shipping. You don't have to store inventory. Second pro is you don't have to worry about um, fulfilling orders. So like, you know, once your orders start to come in, your business starts to grow, maybe you don't want, you don't have the time to dedicate to sitting there, fulfilling each item, placing jewelry in each box, or you don't have the patience to be cutting labels, putting labels on, you know, your packages. Maybe you're just too busy, your life is too busy, and you don't want to worry about that and deal with shipping supplies, marketing, being the content creator, managing social media, doing the videos. Like you can wear a lot of hats when it comes to owning a business. To have something like this taken off your plate can really, really save so much time so you can focus on certain aspect of your business, which brings me to pro number three. So pro number three, you can focus on just dealing with your marketing strategy. If marketing is your best skill, um, then you can focus on like dealing with marketing ads, like Facebook ads, Pinterest ads, focusing on building a brand and focus on engaging with your customer, then worrying about having to figure out, you know, which collection we should bring in next, which jewelry or which style is trending at the moment that you think you're customer would like for me i own inventory at my house and let me tell you to think of a new collection can be very very time consuming especially if you're not in a creative space at the moment honestly a lot of times if you go to the drop shippers storefront you can actually see which item has been very very popular and all you have to worry about is adding it to your store and also you can test out a variety of styles all you have to focus on is your marketing strategy like focusing on building your um facebook ad and focusing how you can build more traffic how you can convert your audience using a particular ad focusing on you know building your pinterest or social media platforms um, and just basically building that skill because you can have a pretty site you can have pretty inventory but if you don't know how to build that traffic it really doesn't matter because then you're sitting there with um product or not um and your storefront is not making any type of money and it's just a waste of time and you're not really being a profitable business 
The fourth pro is you can test out a variety of style. You can add a bunch of styles to your site and kind of figure out which your customer like the most. So as you start to build more, you know, customers, build more followings, you can kind of figure out which style is selling, selling out the most, which is being added to your cart the most. So let's say like what I'm wearing. So let's say you add it to your site without owning the inventory. Um, you just have the digital photo and the product description and the price. And you see that this particular necklace is selling out the most. Maybe you wanna have this particular piece as your staple piece, as your long-term piece in your store. So you can focus on what you need to have. Maybe you wanna build a collection. So maybe you wanna focus on figuring out what inventory, which type of jewelry or necklaces or rings or earrings um, that your supplier has. Maybe build a collection um, by adding these digital pictures on your site and descriptions and building a collection and focusing on like maybe the photography side of it, getting more influencer to rock that um, piece. If you end up buying the samples um, to those pieces, uh, and then you can focus on like really like just getting the collection out there, promoting it the best you can. And then once you start seeing that collection selling out, maybe long term you might want to transition to having the inventory in house in your own space if you want to. But if not, if you want to keep everything all digital, you can just focus on like keeping this collection as your main piece or to what your store is about. Definitely when you own a jewelry business, you want to have your basic staple pieces that people know your brand for. Um, there's so many jewelry business out here. You got to figure out which uh, piece or jewelry will make your brand stand out, which people will know you for and give out something that's unique. You don't want to just add every type of style that's trendy and be like every other jewelry brand. You definitely pick certain different pieces. And what's good about drop shipping too, depending on where you are drop shipping from. Let's say you're drop shipping from Alibaba, because there's there are a few suppliers that do offer drop shipping from Alibaba. Then maybe you have about like three vendors you're working with. Then maybe you can pick out different styles that are popular from their storefront add the pictures to your site build a very curated very unique collection that way the only way people can get those particular pieces is shopping your site um and then you don't have to worry about owning the inventory then all you have to do is once that customer has placed an item um, in your store let's say they place like two pieces then you would go to your um, supplier back in and request the two um, inventory that you need and then they would go ahead and ship off the item and at this point you just made profit without having to worry about inventory of course you still have to calculate you know the inventory amount and how much you're gonna price it at, at a retail price to make sure you're still gaining enough for your store to so use some of that for your Facebook ads and keep on generating more traffic so that is basically the pros to um, owning a dropshipping business. Now we have talked about the pros. Let's kind of dive in a little bit into the numbers, how dropshipping would particularly work. So let's say you want to add a evil eye to your store and the inventory price is $5 and your supplier is charging you a dollar fee for them to run the dropshipping service for you. So that's about $6 in expense. For so let's say you know you charge retail price at 50 and your expenses at six the customer places a order for that evil eye you would then purchase it for six dollars and then you would keep the remaining amount which is 44 dollars in profit but also you have to think about what else you would need to expense off that profit maybe you run ads monthly or weekly to build traffic and convert those people so maybe you are running let's say weekly you're running ten dollars in ads or even 20 so let's say we were running twenty dollars an ad weekly so that means twenty dollar goes off the 44 so that leaves you 24 dollars in profit after ads after your six dollars in um, purchasing inventory of course this is a very simplified number you know it all varies depending on what you need to um sell this particular item when it comes to your marketing strategy so it will all vary per business you know owner um, so now that we have breaking down a number let's talk about the cons to only a drop shipping business number one con is the lack of branded packaging so once you are working with these suppliers 
sometimes honestly they don't have the best packaging it's not going to be catered to your brand so if packaging is not something that's important to you maybe you have a very unique collection or jewelry pieces that is not offered anywhere else and that is your advantage point then maybe it might not be a big deal breaker for you as long as you're offering that you know customer service you're offering that high quality content high quality material the second con to owning this business would be shipping so honestly when it comes to job shipping you don't really control the shipping time your supplier is in charge of that so if you're dealing with a supplier that has a long shipping time then that can be a very very bad reputation for your brand especially because your customer don't know where your inventory is coming from so definitely take that into consideration with working a supplier to find a supplier that offers very fast shipping you know if they can ship out in less than a week or then that way you can honestly know that your customer will receive it in a very timely manner so definitely take that consideration you don't want to work with a supplier that offers a very long shipping time then the customer will be angry and mad at you as the um, business owner third con to this method would be the lack of control of inventory so let's say you know the evil eye is a very popular um, necklace in your store they can't get it nowhere else and let's say that supplier stops uh, creating that evil eye because you don't own that inventory because you never placed a um, order for it a custom order for it and it's no longer on their side then that means that you, you're losing on money in the long run and the only way you can prevent that from happening is to place a custom order and ask them hey i'm willing to pay up front for this custom piece can you make that piece again because my customer loves it and i want to keep it in stock so at this point you would end up owning the inventory physically in your house or wherever you were conducting your business so definitely you know be mindful of that you know sometimes i've worked with suppliers in the past where they had this particular earring i was in love with and it, it was sold out and they no longer offered it just because they no longer felt like they needed to make it i had to place a custom order for that earring to have it in store so definitely take that into consideration basically all the cons to job shipping i'm pretty sure there's a lot more to it I basically want to give you like the rundown what can happen if you have this job shipping model um just to kind of be aware what it takes to run this particular type of business now that you know the pros and cons i want to talk about practical steps to starting a drop shipping business if you think this is the right business model for you so number one you definitely want to find the right drop shipping supplier and you can find it either on alibaba going on our below which is another site below makes it easy to integrate your drop shipping products into your store without the hassle um, and then also you want to ask how do your supplier operate their dropshipping business? Do you have to email them every time an order comes through? Do they have their own system of tracking your orders? Uh, once you know this, then you definitely want to create a nice collection of right products for your brand and define your niche and define who your audience is. And that way you can attract more of that audience to start making um, profit in your business. Step number three, you want to create a beautiful website. And if you don't know how to create a website, I recently did a video where I show you how to create your own jewelry website store. Now I'll link it below. And then once you have a nice website, the fourth step is you want to figure out your marketing strategy. Do you want to do paid marketing or do you want to do non-paid? For paid, that requires like Facebook ads, Pinterest ads, Instagram ads, being more analytical and figuring out how to build your traffic by using your money. But if you don't have much money, you can do non-paid marketing. Your non-paid marketing would include um, a lot of energy and effort and posting on platforms like TikTok, which allows you to create video marketing and be creative and create trending videos that could potentially blow up. And then maybe posting it on Instagram Reels, um, really just using at that time to be very creative and create high quality content. The only downside to this is you can only do this so much until you can get burnt out potentially, or you have to scale up and start running paid ads in the long run. The fifth step would be to build your website SEO make it searchable this will help to bring organic traffic to your website and just rank higher up on Google so those were like the five practical steps and even the pros and cons to how to start a jewelry business with little to no money 
Honest, honestly, there's no such thing as no money, but there is ways on how you can start a jewelry business if you don't have the finances and you're really passionate about it or you want to test the waters. This method is really good if you just really want to get started. And I hope these tips were helpful in understanding different ways on how to start um, a business, whether you have the money and you can buy the products physically or if you don't have money and you just kind of want to play around with it and, you know, kind of beef up your marketing and, you know, not have any type of product on hand. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, give a thumbs up, like, share with a friend, and let me know what video you want to see next. And I'll see you on the next video.